Do you hear that? Could it possibly be time for a Wildsvale Drain Draft? Oh my god, we are one mouse click away from getting into it. And we even got my little drafting buddy here who's... Oh, I'm sorry, I startled you. Okay, this is not going well. This is I, This is a crisis. Despy, I am so sorry, sweetheart. You can literally lie here all day. Dad doesn't need WASD to play drafts. This is my first ever Wilds of Eldraine draft. I have had an insanely, stupidly busy few weeks. And so, let's rotate you out of the way. There you go. I do not know what the power cards are. I don't know what the archetypes are. Outside of a single sealed I played earlier, and as you know, the first time I ever look at anything, I've never not understood it. Polluted bonds, whenever land enters, that player loses two life and you gain two life. I'm not going to worry about that. I think it's not good enough for draft. Goose Mother enters battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Oh my god, it's like a Hydra. When the Goose Mother enters the battlefield, create half X food tokens, round it up. Whenever Goose Mother attacks, you may sack food if you do draw a card. That's the one. Clicked. The Goose is on the loose. Oh yeah, uh, Chancellor of Taylors is the adventure copier. I think that's very good. Back for Seconds is a also very good uh, sort of recursion card draw kind of spell. Uh, what does this do? Gain control target creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste. What? Sack and gain three life. What? That's really crazy. That's like a red effect. When it dies, create food. I don't know a lot of these. What is this? Counter target spell. Ooh. All right, the spell stutter is very good. This is very, very, very good. Um. Scraw! Ooh, what's Sheree do? Oh, you tap and put a stun. Whenever you tap one or more untapped creatures your opponent controls, draw a card. I think this card's pretty nice. What? Whenever a player casts a spell, that player discards a card? Awesome! Oh my god, the cruelty is on. Oh my gosh, whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Yes, 100%. I am in on this. And by the way, when I say I'm in on this, I don't know a lot of the cards. I don't know the archetypes. So the way I'm approaching it is I am just getting some power cards, starting looking at some of the rares and commons. But I'm going to kind of close my eyes to other things. But I will note this, whenever an, uh, an aura enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. In a set that creates lots of rolls, this is amazing. Um, let's see, are there other things? Curse of the Werefox. Troublemaker, oof. Troublemaker, oof. Alright. I'm seeing some blue and green. Enchant player, at the beginning of each end step, they mill X cards. Not even going to worry about that. Uh, up the beanstalk. Whenever you cast a spell of mana value 5 or greater, draw a card. Yep. I'm going to do that one. I've I've learned what my build is. We're going to do some sort of Simic Ram. So we need to find ways that let us delay, that let us ramp. Like, yeah, return to the wilds. Excuse me, return from the wilds. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a good one to get us to the huge stuff. But up the beanstalk does just sound like a partial of like an insult or something like that. Ice out. Very good card. Man, there's some really good blue control. Hey, look, Divination. Oh, eat it, Divination. We got something good right now. All right, up the Beanstalk, I think, is fantastic. Now, if we're ramping, we also have access to some fixing potential. Choose target enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary. If the token is an aura, untap Yenna, then scry two. Choose target enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. So, like, I can't infinitely clone, but I can clone it once. I'm going to go ahead and get this. Uh, the reason being, I don't see any of the good rampy stuff in blue-green that I would want. Uh, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four is also good. But white often has those enchantments that say, exile a creature until this enchantment leaves the battlefield. So I could Yenna targeting... One of those enchantments, it creates a token that's a copy of it, and then I can do it again. So that seems like uh, some good potential. All right, do we see any good stuff in white? Okay, let's look at the green. Create a royal roll attached to another creature you control. 
and this is a bargaining oof, I think I'm going to go ahead and just get Red Tooth Genealogist because we do have the Tangle Span Lookout. So we want things that can make, you know, rolls. Uh, Troublemaker Oof I actually think is quite good because we can, we can sack one of our auras to exile an artifact, enchantment, other such thing. Also, Oof scares legacy players. No, not an Oof. Oh, no. If you, uh, not legacy, excuse me, vintage. Man, my, that joke really fell flat on its face. Uh, let's see. Tar creature puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Eh. Commune with nature. Eh. What's Ruby do? Kind of, kind of rampy. All right, I'm gonna get this. I don't care much about getting these other things. Again, this is this is we we are going for substantive mana. That's I think the thing that I am reasonably certain of. Up the beanstalk. Um, wants more bigness. Oh, this is great. Brave the wilds. So this is the one that makes elemental stuff. I'm gonna play an additional land this turn. Nice. What's nice is sweet revenge. Uh, create a food token. Foods you control have tap to add that sack. Where X is the number of foods you control. I mean, I'm I'm gonna do it. All right, so so we, we're generating a lot of mana. And uh, okay, whenever you cast spell, you have a create a food token. So that's a reacher. All right, this clearly has the upside that I'm looking for, but it's not that great. The worm also seemed pretty good, but here's the thing. Knights of Sweet Revenge is stupid. Like, and I don't mean stupid isn't stupid good. I mean, like, literally, it's stupid. Like, oh my god, my food, it's coming to life! And it's coming to life, allowing me to tap it for mana, you know? And then I'm gonna, like, cast Mother Goose, and Mother Goose is gonna be so big! Like, I mean, this is this is some, some doofy stuff. All right, are you ramp? Yes. Ramp and fixin'. All right. Um, Sky Beast Tracker. I, I probably don't want a lot of these. I like stupid. No, it's good. I like stupid too. Stupid is my favorite thing. <laughs> Frank Sanity. Nope, don't want that. And, and I'm, not, I'm not even really looking at other cards very much. Soul Guide Lantern. Oh my god. Maybe. Water wings, maybe. So here's the thing. I, I don't exactly know what my main color is. Add this only Yeah, that seems good. Yeah, this is this is the game. Clicked. I, I clicked on it. It's been clicked upon. Congratulations. Good job, me. So I probably want card draw and huge creatures, a little bit less focus on disruption and things like that. Let's see what Werefox Bodyguard does. Exile up to one target non-Fox creature. You couldn't pay me a million dollars not to draft Troy on Gutsy Explorer. Perhaps it's Gusty Explorer. Like when you're on the freeway in California. Warning, Gusty wins. All right. Okay. I'm looking at so many good black and white cards in that pack, and I'm trying to learn. I'm, like, I'm like shaking. I'm like, don't make eye contact with it. Um. All right. Do we have some of the good big things? Give you a potential mana sink, which is quite nice. Um. What is this? Dunk a creature. Toadstool Adventure looks like what we want, but let's briefly check to see if there's any white and or red things that. Might be excellent. Yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna get the Toadstool Admirer. It's a good mana sink. I can put rolls on it. 
I do want to be thoughtful to get enough role creation to make Tangle Span Lookout pop off. But uh, if you think I'm not going to be able to do that, you clearly never watched the stream. Curiosity is a very good one. There's another Troublemaker oof. Spell Stutter. Th this might be the kind of interaction that I'm actually hungry for, but... I'm not actually... Th this is not what I'm looking for. This is really not what I'm looking for. What is this? Draw a card, then discard a card, create a treasure token. It's a type of ramp, but I mean, this looks... This looks really bad. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the Troublemaker oof. I, I think I do want to have some good tutus with some upside. <laughs> okay. All right. We Okay, what's this do? There's a battlefield. Draw a card. Cars and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Cool. Really cool. This is get big. Creature tokens get big. Don't even care about it. In fact, I only care about making food. Now, do I have anything that costs five or more? No. Oh, there is a tangle span lookout. There's a tangle span lookout, and let's be real. This is this is gonna wheel. I'm gonna get another tangle span lookout because it lets me continue to redraw. Peace yeah. shield bloodline. Hey, look, quick study. Not gonna overthink it. Red tooth genealogist. I'm seeing a lot of competition for green. I also have yet to draw a single large creature. Not draw, but like put into my deck a single large creature. Where's the big stuff? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is really nice for us. We would love, we'd love some recursion on our stuff. Especially if if it winds up being expensive at any point. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess the goose is the only large one that we have. Seems good. All right, Stormkeld Prowler, get in here. Bestial Bloodline, I think, is a, a, a very particular card that will be good in our deck, but it's particular enough that I think it will wheel often. And I think we're going to be able to pick up one in a moment here. Spider food, destroy a creature that's big and put make food. Oh my god, look, it's another ramp card. Dude, we're ramping into ramp. Oh, this is so stupid, man. Dude, I hope I get another Knight of the Sweets. Protective Parents, this is Mega Hero. What's Toten Tans? I <laughs> have good old Toten Tans. Damn, that's good. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put it out of respect. Um, well, we're gonna have enough mana to make sure that thing kills itself. <laughs> I, I actually don't mind Water Wings. I'm gonna grab that. Territorial Witch Talker. I think I think I probably will want this. Don't need some sorcery speed fixing, do we, Despy? I'm gonna move my keyboard a little bit because my cat, you can see this just small sheen of fur here that is alive and is a cat. Look, I don't need to explain to you what constituent parts here represent a cat. Um, but this cat, she loves to just roll over like this sometimes. And right here, relative to her, is the space bar, which in this game passes the turn. So we've lost a couple games here as a result of that. Okay, so you may have copy enchantment under the battlefield as a copy of any enchantment. Okay, that's a little on the nose, uh, so we're not gonna get that. Huh. We That's one of these two. I'm gonna get this one. <gasps> 
So, when this enters the battlefield, okay, and this draws Red Tooth Genealogist. A buyer is attendance. I love this card. Love it. I need big things. I need big things. I'm gonna get this. I just want more big stuff. Hamlet Glutton? Yeah! Alright, I'm literally getting this because it's big. <gasps> Stormkeld Vanguard? Oh my god, yes! Welcome! We're doing it! We're the best player that ever lived! Yay! All right. Oh my God, Beanstalk Worm. We are doing it. We are doing it. I need to really reevaluate this because we're we're getting some hot stuff coming right on in. I think our gingerbread ramp plan might be dead. Yo, look at that. Prankles, prankle. Huh. Yeah, maybe these do come in. I'm not entirely sure what our deck's going to look like because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, this is some helpful interaction to have. I actually feel like we have a pretty good stack of... Get out of here. Oh, shit. I was going to switch it at the last second. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Probably will get this. All right, I really need to think a little bit when we get this. Create a monster roll, and then when you do, creature... Oh, is that what this thing says? I looked at this and then didn't finish reading it later. <laughs> hey, look, we got a rude genealogist. That's pretty good. Red tooth genealogist. Excuse me. Red Tooth Genealogist seems incredibly good. I don't know. Sure. Hey, Titanic Growth. Not bad. So, I really want to see how we have this working out. I mean, I kind of want to get these two protection spells, Water Wings, in. I'm going to put them in. I'm going to put in Spider Food. And I'm going to do something I, I don't normally do. I'm first going to hit it with the Teeker. I'm going to start cutting at a later time. So let's see. Yenna is choose a permanent. Uh, do we have an easy way to generate this? So let me, let me actually just split this up because I'm not entirely sure the direction that I want to go in for this. Okay. Ramp. Um, some dunks. Maybe not this if I'm running the Water Wings and Titanic Growth, something like that. I like having a couple of creature-based things given that I have like a lot of creatures. Spider food might not actually make the cut, which is fine because we already have Water Wings. Right? Gives me flying. We have um, you know, Curse of the Wire Fox to deal with things that have flying. So here's the thing. So Storm Keld is great. This is... This is actually not that good. But God, am I going to run this shit? Absolutely. You know it. These make food. This is a ramping thing that I can do early. I'm not actually super sure about a buyer's attendant. I don't I don't actually think we need to run a buyer's attendant. These two sky beast trackers. Yeah, this is going to be better than this for sure. So I, I can get rid of this one. 
I do think that the the Tangle Span Lookouts and Red Tooth Genealogist is just an unbelievable card to defend with. I mean, it's a three mana. Create a Royal Road token attached to oh, attached to another target creature you control. Okay, okay. I thought it was attached to a creature you control. Um But I think I want all of these, because these can activate all the bargains and uh also activate Tangle Span Lookout. I don't think Yenna is going to fit in the list. I think I want to go ahead and get rid of Yenna. But I think something that could be wise is to figure out a method to dump in black mana. Because these guys, target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. I think we do want to have some black mana in there for this. This is good. What's this alchemist? Put instant or sorcery in there. We definitely want this. Definitely want this. I think we want both of these. Because they just set up properly. Not sure what I think about this. Mother Goose is also very pricey. And given that this is really pricey, I think that I'm actually going to cut a buyer's attendance. I think I want to cut that. I also think I want to cut Titanic Growth. I think I also want to cut Misleading Moats. Because I think that I am trying to get big... And I want to be proactive and focus on creatures instead of some of these instant speed removal things that are more expensive. I want the instant speed cheap creature buffing things. Yeah, I think a buyer's attendance we can just get out. Can Aquatic Alchemist get adventures? Uh, yeah, the, the, the type when an adventure card is in the graveyard, that is the uh main thing so this is a creature that has a converted mana cost of two the fact that it has an adventure is like an ability of that creature but we would not look at this and say it has a converted mana cost of say you know this three cost plus that two cost creature do we need this we might not need that I think I do want a buyer's attendance out. Yeah, I probably, I probably don't really need quick study. Probably not. But you know, there is an argument that, like, dude, put this in, because this is a way to buff your creatures, and it costs two. So let me actually put this in. And then let me actually look at this again. How's the new set so far? Well, I mean, Agarnar, I, I don't know that much. But God, am I having a lot of fun. Remove Titanic Growth. That might be better suited for a red-blue list, but probably not this one. Quick study. Mm, we have some good card draw, I think. How many creatures do we have right now? We have 22 creatures. What the fuck? Is it crazy to say let's cut these? Is that like an insane thing? Or are the Witch Stalkers still in contention? Well, let's look at our low end. We have one, two, um, three... Well, first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cheap cards. Um, these things. Seven cheap cards that I can play on curve is... It's about right. Especially if I have three Red Tooth Genealogists. I really want those. And looking up at this high end... You know, what might make sense is actually just cutting the Sky Beast trackers. These seem like they have the lowest upside potential of all this. I mean, they have reach. But um, this has reach. Yeah, I think these, these are the ones that I'll cut. Which things I, which means I think I cut the Knights of Sweets Revenge. I think I don't even need this. God, this is so slow. 
zero removal, we have removal. This can fight, and we have two things that give us the ability to deal with flying. And also we have a reacher here. We got some ways to do stuff. We also have a flyer here. We have a number of ways. But I still need a way to get black mana. Ah, uh, I wish that I had actually gotten that grotto. So let's see, we have the Root Rider Fawn, which is a way to get black mana. Is there anything else that allows us to get black mana? So I think I probably want two swamps in here. Dude, this, this thing is killing me. How slow this interface is lately. I think two's fine. Um, there was one more cut that I was going to make, and I cannot remember what it was. Whoopsie daisies. I think Hamlet Glutton, Glutton is the one to go. Two, three, four, five, six. Root Rider Fawn. Yeah, yeah. Surely not the Glutton. I know, it represents me. I feel my identity baked in there. Mark Rosewater watched the stream and was like, I'm going to make a card themed after day nine. I'm like, oh my God, I appreciate it so much. Um, one drop I don't think I'm going to cut I think that's a really really good card so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to look at this one more time I think I think I know what I'm going to cut I think I do oh god I need to do this Cheeker. oh excuse me do we need three genealogists I'm, I'm thinking that risk it and go 16 lands I don't think not not for a, a list that's ramping. You can undercut yourself too hard. Um, let's take a peek at our two drops. Target instant or sorcery. It's probably pretty good. And the adventures that I have is destroy artifact or enchantment. Char creature gets minus two, minus two. This this might be the one to cut. I'm gonna peel one. I really do like water wings in this kind of creatures deck, but the reason I'm I'm willing to cut this is because we have enough adventures that I'm I'm a little close on it. I'm a little close on it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna manage prediction. We're gonna we're gonna say um let's say how many wins will day nine get? The prediction is open. Oh my god, we have the VIP himself. VIP, I annihilate the legendary North American mid laner. I know, what a treat to see you here, man. Look, I have just, I've been playing this set for like two hours. And I'm having a lot of fun. We only have two instants or sorceries. We have one, two instants and sorceries, plus a third here, plus four, five here plus six here, uh, and uh, seven for recurring one of these things-ish. I count that as like six and a half. I think there's another one here. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'll just call it draft deck for now. Please enjoy my cat grooming. Oh, I'm a fan of delicious flavors as I went all in on six or seven. Mm -mm -mm. My cat is grooming and the game is booming. I mean, I will go first. Oh my god. I haven't played Magic online in like two months. Outside of like occasionally just like watching TV, firing it up, playing for like, you know, 30 minutes and closing it. Yeah, the, the little squid guy that's a 1-3 that gets bigger when you cast spells and can recur an instant sorcery from the graveyard. I, I call that like 0.5 instant sorceries because I only have the two target in the grave. 
So most of the time she can be playing that one on curve. So I probably want to go for value right now and like leave the troublemaker oof. Wait and see what villain does. Maybe blow some stuff up later. You're so, you're so cute and you're so beautiful and you're so healthy now. And I love you so much. All right, well, this is the game. I will just slam this. Should I just get to five mana? What an absolute turkey. Goodness, speaking of turkeys, this is, this is quite a run. Stupid fun times is go day nine in the 40 hour SC guide. Fuck yeah, let's learn some StarCraft, baby. Do we play any swamps? We're playing two, Tangerine. Playing a pair. Gingerbread Hunter is okay to just play. Wouldn't you know it. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play this and start trying to dig. Yeah, this this allowing me to Block this is really cool. I'm slightly worried about running straight into removal, but I think five is pretty good stat line. Stab wound, you'd say. Stuff. Go ahead and play the Troublemaker Oof for the bargain cost. Exiling, or excuse me, sacrificing this in order to exile the Stab Wound. Classic card as well. So we will now swing with both of these for eight, which is a lot. What a bargain! What a bargain! I think this is a very good little card. Yep, scratch it. Hit it with the scritchy scratchies. All's good. sniff my head? Yeah, a lot of interesting smells. My brain is just secreting fantastical odors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the may play additional land. Just to get it all out, get the maximum value since it's the only thing I can really do. And going to 10 and then beanstalk worming seems great. Gingerbread Huntering to create a food token. Swinging with Goose Mother. Also great. Totally fine. Not a big deal. That does hurt. That does hurt indeed. So we're going to be swinging for five... Plus four is nine, plus three is 12. So villain has to have a way to deal with this. Or villain dies. Maybe my opponent just plays their giant. Let's slow this down. What's the other line of text here? This is just... Alright. Okay. 
So this is it. We just do this. And the play that we have is swing like that. And let's let's see what villain does. If villain swings, I will probably accept the damage. Takash Poo says, hey tasteless. Hey man, what's up? <laughs> All right, Irion. Irion. Our deck very nearly was working. It was a bit of a stinker that we were so green heavy those first two turns. First round is wonder what Idris doing these days. Uh, last I spoke to him, he got into green physics. Focusing on physic. Physic. All right, well, this is the game. Uh, this, I mean, this looks like a win for us, right? Looks like the W. So we're going to swing with five and four and three. Only two blocks exist here. Got him. I don't even see this art before. Look at this art. Look at that art. It's amazing. 4X optical zoom. Schneider lens. Photo printer. SD card. Look. At that horse. All right, my producer Tara Case is telling me this is not a horse, it's a butterfly. In fact, it may even be a moth. But look at what the zoom did. You can see detail in the antenna. God, I love that meme. I love that meme so much. I remember that the, the producer's name is Tara Cates. My producer Terry Case showing me this isn't a horse, it's a butterfly. In fact, it may even be a moth. Alright, so this is just make a knight and then have some upside. Ow. No, I can't believe you, you're a jerk. Gotcha. All right. So this is why I have three of those aura generators, because Tangle Span Lookout, if you're making a good number of these, is pretty sick. The Tangle Span Lookouts might actually... You know, this... I think I actually might want to cut these. Or rethink some of my construction. Because I'm realizing I have the three things that make auras. And I don't know if I have any other things that make auras. Which a bit defeats the purpose of... What I'm doing. Fight spell does, so that's four. What else? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see if I have another aura generator in there. Alright. What a turkey. Total turkey town. You know, I, I, I'm just going to play this. I'm going to revisit. I'm going to revisit the deck. All right. Savior of the sleeping. This one says, or enchantment is put into the graveyard. Put a counter on it. Great. I'm huge. I'm huge. Uh, 
Nine. Nice. Nice. Excellent. What does this dude do? Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can attack you or planeswalkers you control. Beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life, you gain X life, or X the number of auras you control. Holy cow. That is enormous. That is so big. That is so bad for us. That's horrible. Oh my god, I need to kill this thing so fast. At the beginning of the end step, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up. I'm just gonna puke. Can't believe it. Rexian Unlife. You don't lose the game for having zero last life. All right. You know, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna put in a card draw spell. <laughs> I'm putting it in. Yeah, just get yourself all cleaned up, baby. I'm absolutely just gonna take ten. It's totally fine. It's a big boy. We have some. We do have some insane draws off the top. That's good. We got some of the big ones. Fuck yeah, man. I got humans everywhere. Look at my cat. Look how awesome my cat is. Let's go, Despy. What? Return to a creature enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Whatever enchantment you control is put into a graveyard. Put a blue counter never. Oh my god. Oh my god, no! Oh! Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six. Yay! Alright, we found the bomb. We found the good one. It's the Goose Mother. It, it, it's the it's the goose hydra. This is the funniest thing, man. Like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> dude, my goose mother bird hydra is so sick. All right, that totally sucks, and I'm not about to cry. Turn creature big until end of turn. I mean, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna do that, right? I'm just gonna do that. It's fine. Then I have a lot of healing on the backside. Was sacrificed here. Back for seconds. What was this? Back for seconds. Return up to two. Ah, bargained away the enchantment. Got it. Got it. Eleven out. Eleven says, "I don't mean to take anything away from Magic the Gathering, but have you played around with the War Factory yet on Mechabellum? Dude, let me tell you something." I was almost at 1800 MMR, and I've been playing a lot with the War Factory, and I'm now at 1300 MMR. <laughs> oh! 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 Oh, we're popping off! We're fucking popping off! Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Any of these enchantment creatures?
think we all know what I'm doing. Okay. We are going to end of turn. No, we're not. We're literally not going to do that. We're not going to do that. But what I'm envisioning doing is trying to deal enough damage to my opponent such that I can just blow this up and then we can, like, win in that way. They actually can't do anything about this. This is incredible. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, we're gonna do it. Nice, we get the food, everything's good. All right, so I, I think that we're actually gonna win. I think that we're gonna win. We're gonna win by destroying Phyrexian Unlife. Return a creature card, great. So you get this thing, which is gonna go and like shoot my stuff, which is fine. I'm gonna chump something. This is this is the sweetest win ever. This is the coolest thing in the universe. Watch this. My opponent is going to be at negative two life. Please don't hit the space bar, little cat. Oh my god, I've never had this happen before. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh my god, we did it. Good job. Fuck yeah, you did that, Desperado. What a good cat. All right. Amazing. I've never had this happen before. I've never destroyed an enchantment to win a game. Like, that's incredible. Like, I've, I've never seen that. That's awesome. My opponent was hanging out at negative two, and I just, like, came to collect. That's basically how the United States economy works. Dude, my goose, mother goose, was... Uh-oh. I gotta check this again. Um, let's see if there's some more auras that we have in here. Um, no, we actually don't really have any rolls, huh? There's literally only one other roll generator that we have, which is this guy. I think I actually want to remove water wings and just get a quick study in here. I sense foul play. Oh, pure pandemonium. <laughs> Wow, what a draw. What an absolutely stupendous draw. Stupendous. It's dependable. Crazy of station. This is exactly how Korean dramas are named. All right. All right, it's territorial witch stalkers. Yeah. 
Oh, Biggest Ghost is happy September and thanks for all the content. Oh, that's right, Biggest Ghost. It's September. If any of you haven't given me your Twitch Prime, you better fucking do it or I'll beat the shit out of you, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Menace Trample, what? Huh. Devouring Sugar Maw. All right. <laughs> Speedy Eyeball just subbed. Oh, yeah, speedy eyeball. Instant speed. But in all sincerity, any of you are interested in providing a sub to this channel, either in the form of Twitch Prime or through traditional U.S. American dollars, let me just warmly thank you for your support of our little type of content. Yeah, I'll let that resolve. My opponent doesn't have the black mana to cast this, and I have another territorial. I think it's completely fine. Spurtron says, Summon of Day 9 has an actual impact on holding back the full-on decay of society. That's true. The number of you that would just be complete, degenerate, wandering husks, literally looking like the clay figures in the opening cutscene of Dark Souls. Like, I mean... <laughs> I will resurrect this because I don't have enough mana. Oh, no! Troublemaker. Oof. Uh, I can't actually cast it. That's fine. We'll just cast the gingerbread. Unta. And then next turn we can oof it. Yeah, why not? Double block. See if I care. Forever maidenless swine. No, no, don't worry. You're not, you're not an Elden Ring swamp dredge walker. You you're from Dark Souls, so like literally you're just you're you're a formless clay figure, man. Well, I you I mean I have a form as a formless clay figure, and that form is kind of snowman shaped. Damn, figured it out. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah. Oh. So I'm absolutely gonna oof away the scarecrow guide, hundred percent. Bargain! Tap devouring sugar ma. What about those sack monsters from Amnesia? I would never go so low as to call you a sack monster, Shadow Cat. Do you want to come over here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I left the back door open. Hold on one second. I got to go close that. That's been open for like three hours. Well, hope the flies are enjoying the smorgasbord. Need to block that. No blockers. It's exactly what I needed, man. Fuck yeah. Alright, we're hanging out. crazy of station. I mean, I can always do some kind of double block on Devouring Sugar Maw. Actually, that's probably the right thing to do. Maybe a triple block, actually. What is this guy? What is this horsey? Yeah, I think 
triple block. Probably should have done that the turn before. Because, again, there's only one black source. Dude, these things are so good. I think this is the, the play. I think this is the play. Because there is the white card that says destroy uh, or deal three damage to a creature. So they can get one of those. Oh, wait. If you bargain that, doesn't it just destroy? Oh. Her. El Clutch says, how do you feel going into Starfield? Have you been avoiding review slash commentary for your playthrough? Um... Up the beanstalk. Oh my god, hold on. I'm not going to answer your question at all for a second, El Clodge. I am popping off. Oh my god, baby, yeah. Value or hugeness? No, hu hugeness is the right play here. Because this will let me draw into more of my huge things. Great. I'm certainly not blocking with this, so I may as well swing with it. What? Best news ever! Oh, that's amazing. I did grow the Voracious Vermin, so that's pretty bad, but that's alright. Maybe there's that five mana removal spell that Villain can cast now. Uh, but yeah, Elk Lodge, I just feel excited about it. I'm not going to stream too long on Thursday, because uh, I'm going to have family in town. Um... But my understanding, honestly, is that it's a Bethesda RPG, which is fucking awesome news. Are you kidding me? This, these are amazing exchanges when I have up the beanstalk out. Damn. I mean, I, I have seen... Oh, I'm so glad I have one of these. I have seen people... Um, I have seen that there's controversy around the game. And by that, I mean there's literally not controversy, but Twitter certainly is tweeting. And this is, this is the thing that I have seen with every game for the last five years. There are about maybe four or 5,000 people on Twitter that are very upset. Often less than that. There's only like maybe three, four hundred people on Twitter that are upset. And that's it. Of the tens of millions of people that will probably play this game, that's about it. I think that one of the, the, the biggest curses of journalism as of late. Spells bargain. Look at the top four cards of your library, then put up to two of them back on top of your library in any order in the rest of your graveyard. You draw two cards and you lose two life. Well, this is the thing, is that people describe things like the Twitter mob, but I actually feel like it's the Twitter small collection of people. Where, like, you know, there's journalists that will be like, you know. What does this thing do? Gains death touch until end of turn. Great. There's like a tweet that has like 40 retweets. And there'll be like articles getting written about it. I don't know, it's... I think there's, there, particularly in enthusiast journalism. Can't block this. You didn't need to let it die. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of... I genuinely think that um, the fact that the game is getting, like, some reviews between 6 out of 10 and 10 out of 10... I... 
here's the thing. I view life in terms of probabilistic ranges, not in terms of what is correct or incorrect. So if I make a joke of the, you know, 2,000 people watching, maybe 10% of you laugh. 30% of you exhale loudly through your nose. 40% of you are in the middle of a League of Legends game and aren't even really fucking paying that much attention to me. But hey, watch your minimap. You're about to get ganked. Maybe 10% of you just don't get it. You're just like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Like, maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's some of you that just left your stream open and aren't at the fucking computer, right? Like, so the, the statement, was that joke funny? Was it not funny? What is the correct, um, like... What is the correct statement? That's incorrect. That's just literally an incorrect way to view the situation at hand. What am I missing? I think my opponent thought these were treasures, but they're food. I do this all the time. Yeah, so it's not that one reaction is correct. It's that that range is what I should expect from saying a joke. And I feel like the same is true with reviews. If someone says, this is a two out of 10, I don't think of that as more or less correct than someone who says it's a 10 out of 10. Rather, I say, let's look at what the range of reactions is to help me make a potentially better decision with my purchasing. Stoplight devices, I just died due to not looking at the mini-map and lol. I'm unfathomably Twitter-level angry at you, Sean. Uh, I don't know how else to say this. That sounds like a fucking personal problem to me. Oh my god, no wonder you're stuck in bronze. Alright, what do we got here? Uh, do I want to be up to Beanstalk and around the corner? Probably. I think that this is... I think I'm going to go as greedy as possible. Oh, man. <laughs> and you, you, you type oof. O-U-P-H-E. <laughs> oof. Oh, my God. Collector. Oof. Oh, that's more than I bargained for. Dids. He just keeps going. He just keeps going. The gaming never stops. I think quick study is prob probably the best thing to do here. Yeah, that was, that was close. That was a close call. Close call at all. So, we are hoping to stabilize by playing up the beanstalk and around the corner. But yeah, so I mean, like, you know, it, it, the fact that we are getting all this, this, you know, range of reactions from people, I think it's completely fine. I think it's completely and utterly totally fine. Um, yeah, and, and I don't know. I, 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 I've seen sort of the same thing about Sea of Stars, where some people are describing it as like a game that is just literally, it's just the same thing as Chrono Trigger. You know, one of these kinds of remarks. I am a little bit pained, but I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the Toadstool Admirer. I'm going to play the Red Tooth Genealogist here because I want to actually have more power on the board. I don't need to go for the value of the Tangle Span Lookout because I'm going to get value the instant I can slam a Beanstalk Worm. Yeah, but I, I feel like there's these conversations that feel like this is the dialogue around the game when really it's like less than 1% of people who will ever interact with or experience this game have a specific place they go to have arguments with each other on the internet. Can you pet the cat for me? You got it, Drew Young Kim. Let's see if she's okay. Hey, sweetheart. Can I give you a little spoon? I mean, 
gonna do this. I don't know enough of what these spells in the game are. Okay, so that's just Obsessor 3. So my opponent effectively just discarded this card. Oh, and they got a roll out of it. Okay. So I think that the risk here is sudden death. So I'm just going to put power onto the board. Yeah, I mean, so for instance, the people, I know people that like do not even understand that there are like review sites that regularly post articles about games. Like they sort of intellectually appreciate that that has to exist, but at no point do they play a game and look at the reviews or look at the reviews in order to buy a game. They don't, they don't visit review sites or receive information about reviews, period. They just look at a stream of a game and go, that looks cool. Or just see a commercial and go, oh, nice. And then they just buy it. <laughs> and that's it. Or their friend goes, hey, you should check this game out. Oh, what is it? It's called Starfield. Whoa, this is cool. And that's it. You're a very good cat. Okay, so Voracious Vermin. I just block like this. All right, I have, I have no problem doing this. Not dead after all. <laughs> Let's go. We got the beanstalk. Get big. Get drawn. We has cards going on. Storm killed Prowler. Yeah. Yeah, I, I may as well start punching in for some damage. And then perhaps afterward, we will swing in with Mazagoos. Shillinier says, just curious, how do you feel about the recent trend of games having a paid or early release period? Um, you might be surprised to hear my answer, but I think it is fantastic. Unbelievably, stupidly, excellently fantastic. Uh, because it is a way to spread the release out over a little bit wider of a window. So its base power and toughness is 4-4, four, four, but it still trades. So we're totally fine. Collector's Wall! One, two, three, four, five. This deck rules. All right, threatening lethal and have a bunch of heals to back it up. I just think it's really, 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 really good. And frankly, is an unbelievably nice way to do a couple of consumer friendly things. First of all, it creates a potential for someone who's really excited to pay a little extra to opt into something that is clearly a little different than launch. Um, and for people that might want just a few days of vision into what the game looks like before they buy, they get to have that. Okay. He does a lot of positive things like that. I do need to be a wee bit careful about potential death here. So I'm definitely going to swing with this. I'm definitely going to leave this back. But what's the other thing that I do? This is probably the play. X equals 2, I think is the correct one to do. Because it comes out as a 4-4, four, four, which is enough to threaten lethal. And then we still have uh, enough mana to do some heals for ourselves. And I mean, we're generating like infinite value with this thing.
Great. Dude, this Goose Hydra. Honk! Eight honks going on. Every time the goose honks, it sounds like the opening sequence of the mystics in the dark crystal. Honk. And another one's like, honk. And then like the under goose comes in, honk. External says, I think it can be risky to do that kind of release strategy for multiplayer games. For example, I felt less hyped to start playing Diablo 4 because I'd seen or been avoiding streams for a week. I would not describe that as risky as much as I would describe it as a positive consumer con or a, that's just a good consequence for consumers the fact that you a consumer got the chance to see it evaluate it and go eh I think that's very positive oh we got a spear guard so this is on the 10% that did not get that joke well, at least you're not losing a game of League of Legends. That would be that would be embarrassing. <laughs> armory mice, armory mice, wouldn't winning with the armory be so nice? Like something that I would say is risky would be like. I'm getting grasped? Who gives a shit about grasp? It's actually a lot of damage. Ugh. I might... Oh my god, I might lose a game? Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, let's play the Tangle Span Lookout. Risky might be something like... Uh... I can't pay attention because I'm getting owned so hard. I can't, like, I can't even see him getting murdered so hard. Alright, I, I think it's, I think it's Goose O'Clock. I'm gonna Goose for two. Oh my god. Holy shit, this guy owns. All right, collector, oof. All right, is there a way for me to possibly block in a way that's good? No. <laughs> it's good to see what an aggro deck looks like. It's good to see what an aggro deck looks like. Mm. I think an example of like a risky thing would be like, hey, we are going to give you the opportunity to pay for a specific piece of content in this game. Uh, no, actually, it's, it's kind of hard for me to think of something that is a risk on both sides. It's generally like good for one and bad for the other. Mm. Yeah, my opponent was just literally straight up better. They were the better player. That's how they won the game. Uh-oh. A dog and a goose on the loose. Because, I mean, honestly, goosing on four. Four, four flyer that swings and draws. Yeah, that's good. I see red, so that might make me wish to wait an additional turn to play. Because red has the deal four ability. Counter magic. Did I spell stutter? Come on. I, I really do want to keep the pressure up. And if they keep having counter spells, I'd rather they counter this. Top card, your library anytime. 
Once each turn, you may cast an instant spell from the top of your library. Wow. Wow, in that case, X equals three. Wow. Might as well swing here, punch in for two. May as well punch in for four somehow. Amazingly. That play it was amazing. Do you think that a uh, villain's name is Tractoridge? As like, you know, using edge is like a sort of categorical, like, yeah, we got some Tractoridge going on this weekend. Or do you think that it is the age of a tractor? Like, I'm worried she's getting up there in years. She has quite a lot of tractor age on her. Or is it like um, the angriest tractor, tractor rage? Or perhaps it is a an expanse of anger, like a tract o rage. You know what I mean? Bone Storm sixty nine says it's French. Ah, c'est vraiment tractorage. Tractorage. Oh my god, we have a pair of rats. Old yellow cheese tractorage. All right. Sure. Hit me. Flick your cigarette, then kiss me. I recognize this turn. Dude, we're getting in for more damage again. That was great. Hey, Chaucer says, it's been a while. Howdy, everybody. Dude, howdy, howdy, howdy. Dude, Silver Bullet, yes. No, you girls never know how you make a boy feel. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god, Gwing Warrior says, I'm amazed at the speed at which you notice, think, and manage to speak so sensibly. It's weird to write, but true. That is so kind of you. This is where I learn what the combat tricks in the game are. Very kind of you to say. I work hard at doing that. And I'm not very good at doing it a large amount of the time. Ah, I see. The goose is on the loose. All right, I mean, that that's a lot for getting degoosed here. Curse of the Werefox. All right, so I'm going to just... How you make a boy feel? No. I try, man. I try hard. The key to an agile mind is, uh, I don't know, doing it for 15 years. <laughs> I just, I do this all the time. I do this all day, every day. I'm just yelling at a webcam. I can't stop. Oh, God, I can't stop. So this gives me a plus one, plus one trample. So we have a lot of big cards in here. We have a lot of food, so we can heal up. Uh, our red-blue player doesn't have a lot of blue, and therefore has not really been able to exercise the card advantage. Although Johan is pretty sick for peeling off the top. I'm just gonna refill on some coffee. I made I made 
few cups this morning. It's just me in the house right now, so you know, I just made a little baby amount of coffee for this little baby. Four damage? I love taking four damage. Why would I not want to take four damage? Hey, Muramasa. Good to see you. How are you? Edgewall pack. Yeah. Mine, mine cart guy. Okay, so how do I actually wish to do this? So curse is a little tough. Because I, I don't quite have enough damage to kill Johan, which is the only thing that I would want to kill. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that this food would be good for outside of Mother Goose. I think the answer is nothing. Ramos says, I'm thoroughly enchanted by the new set. I wish you a lot of fun. Hey, thanks. Having some fun. This Menacer is a bit of an issue, but again, this is the one that I'm really, really concerned about. And the double blue makes me worry that maybe they have a fairy thing. What? A absolute bastard. Oh my god, bargain flying haste deal one damage to anything? Oh my god. Holy shit. Uh, this is a huge issue, huh? Okay, bye-bye. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, I basically need the really pricey, huge... Alright, so you have three more shoots, so you're going to shoot this one. Oh, you two more shoots, excuse me. Surprise, motherfucker. Buff the Witch Star would have four power and thus get buffed to five. If I cast this on this, it immediately loses this aura because it gets replaced with this aura. So then it's a three, four, so it doesn't get buffed. That's the reason that we haven't been able to attack. This trade is fine to make. Yeah, I mean the roll mechanic is a little is a little weird in that way. Takes a wee bit of getting used to. Heal back to more than we had at the start of the turn. So we basically need a five mana um, giant guy. All right. Worked worked well. Is it? That one. This thing being able to just spend two mana to deal damage to anything is like very, very scary. Okay. I'm a fan of delicious flavors, so Sean is the luckiest boy. His words, not mine. While true, while true, I will know my name is spelled S E A N. That is how you say my name. And then you typed, I misspelled your name. I knew that. There's a great defense. There it is. Since I've been watching for years, you're perfect. <laughs> my name, uh, Sean, is spelled S-C-H-A-U-G-H-W-N-E. Sean. Um... I 
I did it. I figured it out. I found the play. There's probably an interaction here that I'm just, like, not aware of. But I still feel like I'm the best player here. chill. I know we're going to be taking some dragon damage here. Narrow set of things that I can... Narrow set of things I can do stuff with. Because I can always sack one of these enchantments to blow up something good enchanting-wise that they have. Uh, but this is this is not looking like the winningest game. We got oofed on the goose. All right. Well, now now that actually kind of helps because if I draw another tangle span lookout, I can immediately begin redrawing with it. Go ahead. 6-5, Giant Soldier. Yes, I'm Yanis. Oh, yo, that is so fucking sick. Yo. Yo. Yeah, dude, fuck yeah. Here it goes, Red Tooth Genealogist. On this one, having fun. You now have Ward 1 million. Gadwick's first door. Is a real problem. Five and four is nine, so what I need to do is I need to block like this. This is, this is the effect of chumping with one. We're at nine. This giant is a real issue. So I don't think I have another good way to deal with the Archive Dragon. Like, at all. I think I just literally do not have a good way to deal with that. Like, I have that 5-4 with Reach, but that's not really going to help us very much. Bum, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -bum. Recast. You may choose to charge with copy. This guy has gotten so much value this game, too. All right, nothing's going on. How are you? What else do you want to talk about? What else is interesting happening in your life? What shall we What shall we discuss? What shall the discourse of the chat be while we're waiting for this turkey tractorage? Raising up. This is my cat's standing bed. Oh no, oh God, oh. One Piece live action is fantastic, dude. Hell yeah. I'm, I, I, I've am not consumed any One Piece at all. I don't know if I'm going to start that because I have about 15 television shows that I'm watching right now. Including this weekend, I started watching Justified. And it was... Alright, so... 
so. He's using everything. He's spending everything. Damn it. I'm gonna concede this game. Justified is a little slow, but it was solid. It's funny, I was watching I was watching Justified, but I was like, dude, it's it's good, but it's just it's just slow, man. It's just it is taking its sweet time. Which is great, right? It's fine. Uh, but I then put on the 2013 Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie, Snitch. And it was the pace that I needed on a Sunday night, man. Oh my god. There you go. Yeah, you flipped over and I wasn't even in a game. Alright. This is really... This is kind of a power hand, so I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna connect for it. <laughs> hey, last is maybe dumb question, but can't the oof sack the cursed roll on your giant? It can't sack the cursed roll, but it could sack the um it could sack the monster roll to exile the cursed roll, giving me back the 7-7. Seven, seven at which point I would die to the Counter-Strike. Go to the T-Rex says, The Rock feels very much like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know exactly what you're getting from his movies. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger movies have like a lot of range to them. All right, Red Tooth Genealogist is gonna do this. But I feel like The Rock is like very like, he's always like a, a caring father who just like wants to do the right thing or just a generally good dude who's trying to get through a tough situation for his girl. And I'm fucking all about that. All those movies I fucking love. I love Skyscraper, Watch Snitch. It was great. Also has John Bernthal who I love. Um, uh, what are some of the other ones? There was that one where there's like a really big natural disaster. Yeah, San Andreas, that's right. Uh, uh, the first Jumanji movie I watched it was awesome. It was great. And, and don't get me wrong, I love, I love Schwarzenegger too, but like, his movies have a lot of variety. So this is a... Okay, I see. So this is a cursed courtier, so it comes out. The original card is a 3-3 lifelinker that is cursed. So you give it some stuff to remove the curse. Got it, got it. Got it, cool. Call. Am I called call? Um, now what do I wish to do here? Destroy an artifact and chain, I could destroy this. Seems like a little bit wasteful. I think I want to just create more potential to slam down this card. Curse of the Werebear could be helpful. If you Schwarzenegger was in like Terminator, Kindergarten Cop, and Predator, True Lies. This is already right there, it's a big, big range of movies. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger is fucking rules. Absolutely kicks ass. Love it. Love his stuff. Oh my god, Total Recall, Running Man, Twins. Oh, shit. Oh my god, Jingle All the Way. Wait a minute, is he the greatest actor of all time? What just happened? Holy shit. His movie was in Conan the Barbarian. Jesus Christ, he did all those fucking killer movies. This guy's an absolute stone cold boss. When did that fucking happen? It happened right here, right now. Live on Day 9 TV. I can't believe it. All those movies are fucking awesome. They're all fucking awesome. Last Action Hero, that one was, was not great. It was not great, but I do remember it quite well. Oh my god, those movies are, are unbelievable. 
Don't forget Commando. I will. I'll forget whatever I want. Don't you tell me what, what to and to not forget. Mm -mm, no, sir. It's me, the Hamlet Glutton. Don't fight me. No. If, if any of you all have not seen Total Recall, oh, it's so good. Oh my God, Eraser. Who was, it was him and, who was the actress? I'm like so bad with pop culture names. All right, I'm gonna have my Stormhold big boy. Uh, no, Jimmy Lee Curtis was True Lies. Um, is, it, is it Vivian Fox? Holy shit, if I'm right on that, I'm like, I'm amazing. I'm gonna hang on to this because Byra's a tenant's pretty good. Hold on. In Eraser, who's the lady? God, I, I... Hold on. Eraser. Film. Vanessa Williams? Who's Vivian Fox? Is that a name I just made up? Is that me just, like, mashing random celebrity names together? Who, am, who, who on earth am I thinking of? Oh, no, 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 it was... Was it? No, hold on. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Vivica A. Fox was Will Smith's wife in Independence Day. Right. Dude, so, like, literally, like, my, my basic celebrity and pop culture knowledge is, like, I hear a bunch of names in the 90s, and that becomes one soup. And then I hear a bunch of names in the 2000s, and that becomes a second soup. And if you want to know any name of any musician, you gotta ask someone else. So, Knight of Sweets Revenge. So, I would like to kill that one, but I just played this thing, so whoopsie daisies. Alright, so we're gonna do this. I did this in the wrong order. We're going to swing with the Storm Keld Vanguard. So it can't be blocked except by these two. These two suits can't block. Vanessa Williams. Dude, it's so funny. You say Vanessa Williams and I'm like... Never heard of that name in my life. So this is just a double chump. Just a strict double chump. Come on. Oh, Byra's attendance. Minus four, minus zero till end of turn. Yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, I should have done it on the other ones. My opponent didn't gain life. That's all good. The next soup is incoming. But dude, yeah, all Arnold Schwarzenegger movies are, like, so good. Exile creature, put the rest in the bottom because the exile cards is turned at the beginning of the next combat phase. Target creature control deals damage to its power. Oh, target creature don't control. Okay. So this is like a find a card fight effect. All right, and the beanstalk worm is going to fight something. Beanstalk worm is going to fight something. Okay, bye-bye. So I can't cast that. If I swing with this, he can double block with that, and that might actually be okay. I think that's actually... I think that's actually fine. Nice. I'm going to do this to cast 
this. So now I have a flyer. Great. Hey, Tempest Phoenix says, I just turned 30 an hour ago. Hey, happy birthday. And did some reflecting. Thanks for being such a positive and awesome influence in so many people's lives, including mine, for such a long time. Dude, thank you, Tempest Phoenix. Man, I hope you've had a great birthday. My 30s, so much better. So much better than my uh, 20s. So much better. Oh my god, I saved this card for a century, and it is paying off. Mm, 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 mm. Um, okay, how do I want to do this? Five and five is ten, so minus two, minus two. Not good enough. But still good enough to clear. You know, let me just tap this like this. Great, so now I have this 6-5. So now I actually can do like kind of a scary swing here. I'm gonna get this turkey. So I'm gonna swing with these three big ones. So the hollow scavenger can do something. None of these. I'm really that scared about, because I can give them minus two, minus two. Nice. Really nice. Terrific. Fantastic. I think I'll blow up this one, because this is a 7-8, but this is a 6-5 that is still growing. I think this is the better exchange. I think. Might have been more arguable to keep the other huge dude. But I like having a flyer in this situation. Draw a card, discard a card. Seems good. Play this pre-combat, so that way we have the big stuff. I think we have a pretty intimidating swing that we can do now. So let's go ahead and just swing out, I guess. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. I mean, technically there's some double blocking, triple blocking action that can happen, but there's not a good double block. Like, if you wanted to kill this, you'd have to block with, like, this and this. Or both of these. Piccolodian says your lands are friggin' sick. Thanks, Piccolodian. I love these lands. I love stained glass art. I love stained glass art. Especially modern stained glass art artists. Notably Judith Schechter, one of my favorite uh, artists of all time. Judith Schechter does beautiful stained glass work. Like the sort of um, more old school stained glass art, like what you might see in like a church, I think is okay. But I really like the way that a lot of really nice modern stained glass stuff looks. Oh, thank you. Fucking beautiful. Did you just have in Instagram? Do Piccolodian? I don't have Instagram. Make a food. Snarl. Okay. Three, four, five, six. I found the play, everyone. I did it. I found the technique. Three in the air, like you just don't care. And then more over there. I'm gonna use a restroom.
I knew I'd come back to a yawning cat and a big victory. Jespy. The friendliest little cat. All right, dude. Are we? Oh, we're five and two? What can you do? Five and two. What a treat. Oh, hey, Despy. Do you want to you wanna go down? Here you go. Here's your, here's your ticket out of here. I moved the chair. You don't, you don't want to go? Is your little face okay? Oh, man. My cat keeps getting these, like, little swollen spots on her cheeks. I'm a fan of Delicious Flavor. It says one more. And I become the richest man in the world. Hell yeah. Huh. Wow. It's actual one mana ramp. Wow. So this is green. Green begets green. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Can I get infections easily? Her eyes look okay. It's like right here. What is this? Two damage target creature. Wait, what? Damn. Shit is sick. Plastic water bowl or food bowl? I have stainless steel food food bowls. And uh, I think it's like clay. It's like a nice... Oh yeah, she has plastic for her dry food. You're right. Oh. Especially if it's bowl shaped rather than flat plate. Ah. Ah. Could be an issue. This could be an issue. But things are growing slow over there on the other on the other side. I'm not that worried. I can also play Beanstalk Worm and be just fine. If I draw land, I'm just going to Beanstalk immediately. Wow, this is a crazy ramp card. Utopia Sprawl? It's like a land of elf that doesn't die. You can't bolt the bird now. Ooh, man, can you imagine turn one, Utopia Sprawl? Turn two, Topiary Stomper? Turn three, five mana? All right, yeah, bring it on. It's fine. No. I mean, yeah. We're going with the greed is good play. Yeah, because ne next turn I'm going to play the Beanstalk Worm. So my opponent probably has to shoot this now. Then if we draw a land, we can just play all of these. Going to four. I mean, this still is like a really unbelievably slow. All right, let's do this. And then let's do... This. Draw, draw. And I mean, Curse of the Wear Foxes. Right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, tap creature. Oh, and it's a food too? Yo, that's sick. Alright, so we can't block this. Can't do anything about that. Interesting. So, I actually think I do need to chump once here, because here's the thing. I I'm getting so much insane value in this position right now. I'm getting so much value. 
So if I play this, I will have two available for this, but that does have ward two, so we just need to be careful. Gonna tap me. Because I mean, I'll double block this. I think that's a good play. Oh, yo, that's, that's so sick. Alright, so. I think the right play to do is this targeting this and just shooting that. This seems like as. Solid a decision as I could make. We get to draw two off this. I know, sweetheart. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because we're just getting way too much value here. Way, way, way too... Oh, dude, the goose is on the loose. Oh, yes. So I think that we will just again play this on the Tangle Span lookout, and I mean we're just we're just getting so much value. This is so insane to me. Yeah, you can go down. There you go. Choose attackers. I will attack with one. Because if one of these gets tapped, I, I do want to block the other one. I know Mother Goose is coming, and Mother Goose will give us a lot of heals. But I still want to be thoughtfully careful. Not to just abruptly die, because again, we have infinite value coming down here. Okay. Fairy Dream Thief just not doing anything is very, very good for us. Chilling on turns. Yeah, so I'm just gonna... Yeah. We're just gonna do this. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm gonna say X equals five. Yeah. I'm gonna do X equals five here. Which will draw us a card. Generate for us three food. And we are absolutely chilling in this turn. I want the option of being able to heal. I want the option of being able to minus four, minus O oh stuff. Target X is the number of foods you control. Okay. So I'll probably swing with the goose. Okay, that's good news. So let's just swing with the goose mother. If we draw our other really big thing, we can blow this thing up. Great. Play a few things. Seems good. Play a few things. Seems good. So we're just gonna chill. We're making food. The Dream Thief might come in. Again, we can heal for like a billion. Do like this. I'm do it in this order. I'm going to respond to that by doing this.
right? Great. Great, great, great. Hey, all the believers have it, dude. The believers have it. We have successfully won ourselves a lot of channel points. Sixes and sevens have it. Oh, yeah. How much did you bet? I, I was pretty pleased with how this deck panned out. But I think one of the more interesting things about these lists is the idea of, like, I am going to put in only blue and green, green cards, but one of them has a blue-green... Or excuse me, one of them has, like, a black adventure or a red adventure. Uh, looks good to me. I know, sweet pea. Not really going to affect us very much. Tangle Span Lookout, Red Tooth Genealogist combo, looking excellent. Oh, oh, that's a good draw. Gives us some nice optionality. Gallant Pie Watcher. I'll just play the Lookout. Knotted and besotted. Woo, shit. Holy, oh my god. Oh, good lord. Where's Double Strike coming from? Where's Double Strike coming from? As long as two or more Nylon permits. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. All right. Well, I, uh, this 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 could very this could very well be done. Oh! Ow! Fucking ow! Oh shit! Okay. Wow. That was that was quick and violent. All right, well, it is a good day to die. Welcome back. Do we die? Is it death? Get me the fuck out of this game. I've exploded. Do double strike two turns in a row? Yuck. Yucky, ucky, icky, ooh. All right. Woo! Six and three by the... Skin of our teeth. 